The Springfield Armory XDS in 2012 entered a market that was fairly new when it came to single stack subcompacts. At that point, we'd only seen the PBS and of course the shield. Now, most guns at that time were thick, double stack, big, large, heavy handguns, and the XDS actually ushered in what I think is probably a new age of new competitive marketing for a new market that we are seeing explode currently today. The XDS had many good features in regards to what gun owners were looking for. Small, compact, great features, and very usable. Then Springfield, this past year, introduced their Mod 2. While it kept many of the features very similar to the old Mod 1, the Mod 2 had some new qualities that, in my opinion, made this a very competitive gun in an already crowded market now for single stacks. The new ergonomics, the new safety, and the grip. Everything at this point of this handgun had the same qualities, the same features, if not slightly better, and the same ergonomically great handgun as the Mod 1. Now, of course, some small improvements were changed in regards to the Mod 1 to Mod 2. Different slide serrations. We have different features in the front. Now you can get them with Ameriglow front sights. And as opposed to what eventually became a staple for all XD models, that nice bright fiber optic front. The rears are blacked out or the two white dots in the rear. Overall, the XDS and the XDS Mod 2 are still good enough options on an extremely crowded market for single stacks. So now we're gonna take it to the table we're going to take a look and see what the real differences are between the two. All right, guys, welcome back to the table and another edition with 1776 or bust. I hope you all had a great new year and uh, hopefully this new year will bring you all fantastic surprises, especially us in the gun world. Now, in regards to the two guns you see on the table, uh, again, this video is not to win the hearts and minds of anybody. This is just to show you some comparisons between an older model and a newer model of still what I think are relevant single stack guns on this market we currently have. Now, obviously the gun industry is, in my opinion, really transforming their, I guess you can say their image in regards to what they wanna sell you. What we're seeing a lot of now are these really small, slim guns that may hold anywhere from eight to 10 rounds that are becoming more appealing overall. And a lot of that has to do with the, the capability of, of hiding them better, uh, but still having decent shootability. Again, I, I'm not 100% sold on that idea. You know, most of my single stacks are gone. Uh, I just picked up a PPS M2 RMSC. I'm still waiting for that to come back from, you know, wonderful Sir County, New York. So I look forward to seeing that in about another three years or so. But um, nonetheless, I, I kind of moved away from the single stack market, even though it seems a lot of manufacturers are moving towards that market. Now, in regards to the PPS, um, I can't wait to get that handgun. But at the same time, we have so many options right now. You know, you see what you have on the table here. You've got the Walther. You've got the Sig P365. You have the LCPs. You have uh, the Shield, which is a huge one, the Glock 43. And now Glock just announced the 43X and the 48 as single stack guns. Maybe the 48 not being as small as many people would want, but that's why you have the 43X. Um, again, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't know which one I'm going to get yet, but I definitely will get at least one of them. And I think overall they're going to be big sellers for Glock. Now, in regards to these two handguns, you know, for many people, around 2012, um, Springfield Armory kind of opened up uh, a new category in regards to handguns. They came up with a single stack market, although they were not the first ones. From what I've gathered and what I was able to read about, the Walther PPS M1 was actually uh, introduced in 2007, this coming out in 2012 with the Shield, and then ultimately you saw the Glock 43, you saw these L LCPs. Um, and again, you saw, you know, the P365, now, of course, the 43X and the 48. But really, you know, when you look at this, this gun has been around for quite a while. I mean, we're talking about, you know, um, God, I don't even know what year it is right now, 2019. So about seven years, you know, this gun has been in existence. And, you know, for the most part, this gun is still a competitive handgun for the single stack market. There are a lot of people who swear by the XDS. Now, I, for one, was not one of those people. And there was one reason why I always stayed away from the XDS. And it was very simple. It was the fact that this back here was always just, in my opinion, just a little too close to my hand fat. And uh, as you can see right there, uh, I was always worried about getting slide bite on this hand. And I've had it before, and I'm going to tell you it sucks, and I don't want it again. So I stayed away from this handgun. Now, were there some issues with this? Yes. Some of these models... 
eventually had some issues. I think it was with the, um, I don't know if it was with the trigger or the striker. I'm not sure. I can't remember what it was. But they did have some issues. They did have to recall the XDS. But for the most part, the majority of people owned XDS um, models from Springfield. We're very happy with them. You know, they shoot really well. They're comfortable to carry. They're small and, and, and really able to conceal very well. I mean, if you look at the single stack magazine, you know, you're still getting a pretty decent purchase. Your pinky, or at least mine does, hangs off a little bit on that bottom. But again, you still get a pretty good purchase on this handgun without having really any problems. And I think that was always a good deal in regards to how this gun was made. You know, again, there's not a lot of sharp edges on the gun. It's very rounded. The serrations on the rear were fairly cut deep to get a very good uh, purchase on that slide and able to pull that. In regards to the extended, whoops, the extended magazine, um, you know, this gave you a little bit more, uh, I guess you could say, real estate for your grip. And you can see, guys, that even with that, I mean, it's still a very comfortable handled gun. And I think that's what attracted a lot of people to this when it was initially released. Now, of course, the big competitor at the time was the Shield, which, again, I think the Shield is still probably uh, one of the best single stacks on the market. It's hard to say that there is a best because they're all very good. But it's very hard to beat the shield in a lot of different ways. And even when they revamped it to the 2.0, still a very, very competitive handgun when it comes to the single stack market. So recently, this past year, Springfield came out with their XDS Mod 2. And um, you'll notice that there's a lot of features, if you're familiar with the XD line or the Mod 2 line, that they took from that handgun. Obviously, you can see the new grip zone without the actual grip zone. So now you know exactly where to hold the handgun. Um, so that took a lot, that actually got a lot of slack. And it's kind of funny because when I owned the XDs, uh, the Mod 2s, it never made sense why people griped about it because you're never going to see that. I mean, if you're grabbing your handgun and you're putting your other hand over that, who's going to see that? Uh, I don't think anybody. But some people kind of got bent out of shape about that. And, you know, sometimes the aesthetics take over our logically thinking brains and we right away don't like a handgun. You know, I'm also guilty of that as well. Now, overall, the handguns are almost identical in a lot of different ways. There are some little strange quirks about both of them in regards to being able to, I guess, have a little reciprocity. In other words, having some things of this fit into this and vice versa, you're going to find that that's not necessarily the case with these two handguns, which I thought was extremely interesting because you would think just by looking at them that these guns are identical and they're actually not, which is, which is kind of interesting. But the XDS Mod 2, um, I think they've made some really decent improvements to what the XDS Mod 1 was. First off, they changed the, uh, the um, material. I won't even say material, but almost the texturing on the grip. So you have nothing here, which honestly, let's be honest, it, it probably does not matter too much if you have texturing here at all on the sides. Most people will admit that mostly what you want are good texturing on the front and on the rear so that you're really controlling that muzzle flip. Um, again, if this was smooth and this was textured, Mm, I don't know if that's really going to control it too well. Now, don't get me wrong. Having some texturing here helps your support hand. But honestly, I think the strong hand is where you really want to have that better um, texturing. So they did a really nice job with that. Again, um, you still have that grip safety. Love them or hate them. They're there. Uh, the mag release, which I have to say is something I love about Springfields that doesn't get mentioned a lot, is just how springy these mag releases are. I mean, that's just great. The thing gets thrown out by these mags, and I love that. I think it's a great feature. I think most, more guns should have that to be able to positively clear that magazine when you need to. You know, sometimes if you look at some of the other handguns out there, you don't necessarily have that. And I think that's something that they need to work on a little bit better. Again, the slide has changed a little bit. Uh, if you compare the two slides to each other, what you're going to notice is that while most of the, I guess you could say the aesthetics of the slide are exactly the same, for example, you'll see the 3.3 written on both slides or etched into both slides. And then you'll see the XDS um, slash 9 for XDS 9 because we need to make sure we know that this is a 9 millimeter. And then, of course, <coughs> excuse me, guys, uh, the Made in Croatia over here, uh, and instead it's over here. All right, so we're back. Sorry about that. Got a little bit of a dry throat there. Um, so I had to get some water so I could actually talk again. Anyway, so if we look at the slides, guys, the slides are basically identical. Now, there have been some cha uh, small changes here. Again, the rear serrations on the, the XDS Mod 1 are slightly different. They're actually cut a little bit deeper, and you'll notice that you have this line going through um, the slide on the top here, and uh, the, the actual serrations go right to the actual line. So you can see that lines up very well right there. 
And I have to say that the serrations on here are cut very deep. Um, it's actually very easy to get a grip, good grip on the slide and be able to actuate the slide, which I think is a benefit, especially if you have, you know, greasy hands, wet hands, bloody hands, you know, I don't know, maybe you bathe in butter or something. Then, of course, when you have the XDS Mod 2, again, you still see that line that goes across the slide here, but you'll notice that the serrations actually extend lower or underneath that line. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things I noticed is that these serrations are not cut as deep on the sides. Um, so it does kind of, I'm not going to say that you can't use the slide effectively, but you can definitely notice that uh, these are cut a little bit deeper, at least, at least the way they feel. Again, I could be wrong, but it just seems like they've rounded them off a little bit more in this area right here. So <clears throat> you're not going to get necessarily a bad purchase on the, the slide, but you're not going to get it, in my opinion, as good as one on the XDS Mod 1. That's just what I found. Now, uh, in regards to the grip, uh, the grip is, again, well, it's a little bit better on the XDS Mod 2. I'm going to tell you, holding these both in the hands, this definitely feels much more ergonomic than this one does. Uh, this one reminds me, hmm, uh, you know, kind of of the uh, PPS M1, kind of blocky. I don't want to say blocky because that's not really what I want to say, but it's sort of like that. So while it's not as ergonomic as this, it's still fairly ergonomic, just not as comfortable as this one. This one has a tendency to just ride in your hand, I think, a better, a little bit better, a little bit deeper, feels a little bit more, uh, you know, I guess secure is a good way of saying that. Now, in regards to the safety, the safety is a little bit different. Uh, the safety in the back here is more rounded, as you guys can see, whereas this one has kind of this little uh, protrusion, uh, almost like a beveled area out there in the back. And compared to this one right here, um, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I don't necessarily know the meaning behind it or why they changed it. Um, you know, there is, I, I'm wondering if maybe this sits a little bit more uh, comfortable in the hand, maybe, and it gives you a better, a better ability to activate that safety. But I have yet to see anyone who's had trouble grabbing onto a gun and not being able to activate the safety. Um, I'm not sure why that is. You know, maybe a designer cue. I'm not sure. Um, what's my preference? I actually like the older one better. It's just sitting a little bit more comfortably in my hand. You know, again, it depends. You know, I put several hundred rounds through this gun, and one of the things that I noticed right away was uh, I was definitely getting a, a little bit of a, a mark uh, inside the, you know, the part, whatever you want to call this, the webbing of my hand. And um, while it, was, it wasn't a horrible punch or a horrible pinch, you could still feel it, whereas on this one, you didn't necessarily have that because it's smoother in the back. Now, again, you have to realize there's probably not anybody who's going to use this gun for 200 straight rounds in a self-defense situation. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. You know, like I said in the old video, you're not going to be really using it for that. The, you know, if you're going to be taking this to range, you're not going to be necessarily dumping 500, 1,000 rounds at a time. The gun doesn't really, in my opinion, fit that purpose because of the size of it. Now, in regards to magazines, you know, a lot of people were talking about the reversibility or the um, convertibility from the old to the new. It's kind of interesting. There's a couple of interesting little features about both of these that I found when I was using them and playing around with them for a little bit. And one of the things I noticed was, let's say, for example, this just came out of the uh, Mod 2. This is the Mod 1, and you'll notice that this goes in, no problems, okay? Uh, again, it actuates the slide, locks it back in place. It'll feed the rounds because I did test them. Um, so, again, no issues. So it's perfect, right? It works in this one, and it works in this one. Then let's take <clears throat> the flat base, okay? So we have the flat base mag in the XDS Mod 2 or mod one, excuse me. And then we have it in the, the mod two. No issues. Does it lock back? Sure it does. Works, perfect, no problem. The interesting one that I found was the reversibility of the extended magazines. So this is the original, the uh, M or the M1, if you wanna call it the mod one, the XDS mod one, versus the XDS mod two. Now this one is your eight rounder, this is your nine rounder. So it's kind of interesting because um, this one, We'll go in your mod two, okay? So we know that's where it goes. No problem. It fits. Everybody's happy. But then we take the XDS mod one magazine, we stuff it in there, and we can't get it in. And really the reason being is because the mod one has, does not have this lower lip. Uh, if you look at the mod one here, you're going to see that it, it does not have that extension. Let me just dump the mag. Um, and you'll notice that this one comes down a little bit further, which gives you a little bit better gripping of the handgun, in my opinion. But at the same time, you cannot use this uh, sleeve from here on here. 
you'll have to remove the sleeve in order to use the magazine. Uh, once that sleeve is removed, the magazine works. You just don't have anything there. So, I mean, you technically could use it. You just can't use it technically with this piece. Now, with this one, here's your XDS Mod 2. Here's your XDS Mod 1. Oh, look at that. All right. So, again, you have your nine-round magazine, and it fits perfectly inside the Mod 1, which is kind of interesting. So, while you can convert the smaller magazines to both back and forth, you can't use the sleeve from the Mod 1 in the Mod 2, but you can use the sleeve from the Mod 2 in the Mod 1. Make sure you write that down. So overall, there's some compatibility with both, uh, both of these handguns, but at the same time, there's not necessarily 100% compatibility. Now, one of the other things that I found about this that I thought was interesting, again, the takedowns are identical. Just have to pull the slide back, lock it in place, and then you just tilt the takedown lever up. Man, this thing is tight. And then there you go. Drop the slide, pull your trigger, slide comes off. Yay! I know, this is like, you know, so difficult for people to figure out after a billion videos, right? So again, if you were to look at both slides, well, let's kind of compare the two. Actually, I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this so you can see a little bit better. Let's see if we can do that. Zoom. All right. So as we zoom in, one of the things you're going to notice is that the gun or the slides of the gun look almost identical. Wow, what a surprise, right? Same manufacturer. So you'll notice that they are almost identical. Obviously, the plunger safeties are different uh, in both. This one is more rounded, very traditional. This one is kind of, uh, reminds me a lot of a Glock Gen 5 um, plunger, which is interesting. Um, but other than that, everything is about the same. I mean, there really is no significant difference. Now, of course, if we look inside of the frame or the lowers, let's see if I can line these up. You'll notice that even inside the lowers of the handgun, all the parts look the same. So then the question is, does the Mod 2 slide fit on the Mod 1 frame and vice versa? Well, let's test it out and see. Let me just back this out really quick. Beep. All right, perfect. So let me see which one I got here. All right, so this is the Mod 2 slide. This is the Mod 1 lower. Eureka! It works. Look at that. Well, no, it doesn't. Okay, while the trigger is usable, you're going to notice that this slide actually doesn't fit the lower. And, uh, you know, some people may be surprised by that, even though the guns are basically the same uh, side, size wise, you name it, they're almost identical. Um, you're going to notice that that just doesn't fit. Okay. Unfortunately, you can actually take them down still. I was a little concerned when I tried this off camera that I wasn't going to be able to remove them, which would suck. And then, of course, if we try the mod one frame. You'll notice that while it looks like it goes on there pretty darn well, you'll notice right there it doesn't. Okay? So you'll see, let me see if I get that in camera. You can see that the slide actually extends further back on the lower of the Mod 2 with the Mod 1 frame, and there's absolutely no trigger moving on that one until you take it down. And then you can pull it off. Thank God that happened. So I thought that was kind of interesting because even though the guns look um, dimensionally similar and are basically identical, the guns are not going to work on each other's lowers with the other slide. Um, and that's kind of interesting because like I said, if you look at everything, everything looks identical, but there's a couple of differences here inside somewhere. And after pulling these apart and playing around with them for a little while, I was not able to determine what that is. But again, I'm not going to tell you guys that I'm a an engineering expert and my mic just kind of fell off which is kind of interesting let me try to fix that <laughs> this is what i love doing videos guys because sometimes everything goes wrong but anyway i mean overall it, it's kind of interesting because there are going to be some people who love the xds mod one they're going to love it you know it's like anything else this is about personal preference it's not about beliefs or you know what who did what and what did what it's about what is your preference me you guys know I love styres, man. I love those handguns. Most people have never heard of them. Most people dog them every chance they get, but they're great guns. Personal preference. In regards to this, if you like the XDS Mod 1, is it really a reason for you to move to the Mod 2? You know, it's your call. Um, you know, fit and finish, they're about the same. So in my opinion, it's, they're very good in regards to that. Um, you know, again, when you look at the differences aesthetically, there's a lot of similarities and some differences. 
I think the Mod 2 gives it just a more modern look. And I also think that ergonomically it feels better in the hand. Is that enough to sway you away from the Mod 1 to the Mod 2? That's going to be up to you. I think if you really like the gun, then you're really going to like the Mod 2. I think if you really hate this gun, you may want to just take it, uh, a look at this one just to see. Uh, one of the things that also I think was a huge improvement was that beaver tail on the back. Again, no worry of slide bite because of where that beaver tail fits. And I think that's a huge improvement. I mean, little things like that sometimes go a very long way from convince, or for convincing people that this is the type of gun they want to look at. So again, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. You know, do you think this is enough to re you know, kind of change your mind on the XDS Mod 1? Again, I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm here to get your opinions and see what you guys think and start a conversation about what do you like, what do you not like, why or why not. So uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I hope you have a great day. Hopefully you have a really awesome new year at this point. And as always, everyone, freedom is never free.